All right, students, so we said in our last screencast, we talked about light energy, and we said that light can either be transmitted, reflected, or absorbed by matter. And when light is absorbed, what that means is that the light is absorbed by an electron, and the energy is used to make that electron jump, woohoo, to the higher energy level. So in other words, it gets a little bit more potential energy. Now in chemistry, what happened is you just use flame, and the light jumped up to a higher energy level, but then immediately went back down to the original energy level. And when it went back down, energy was given off as light that we saw as the different pretty colors. Here in biology, um, we're gonna talk about how we can excite that electron, woohoo, but then keep it in that high energy position. And that's what we're gonna talk about next with photosynthesis. So here's the overall equation for photosynthesis. Again, it is the reverse of cellular respiration. And just like with cellular respiration, we're gonna to want to account for where is the CO2 used, where is the water used, where is the sugar produced, where is the oxygen produced. Um, there's sort of three questions we are going to be getting at with regard to photosynthesis. One, how do we capture the light energy in the first place? How do, how do we actually get that light energy? Um, and then second, how do we convert that light energy into chemical energy? And the chemical energy specifically is ATP and NADPH. NADPH is an electron carrier, just like NADH and FADH2, kind of one of those intermediate um, energy carriers. Um, and then uh, think P for photosynthesis. It's slightly different uh, molecule, but does the same thing. And then three, how do we use that chemical energy to make glucose? So those are our three questions. Let's dive in. So photosynthesis begins with what are called the light dependent reactions. So called because they depend on light. Their job is to capture light energy and use it to make ATP and NADPH. As you might expect, it takes place in the chloroplast. <clears throat> um, so we're going to do player's process, and the first player, of course, is light, and that light has to be of a very specific wavelength. The second player are these things called photosystems. What a photosystem is, 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 is it is a system of pigments and proteins. And so here you see a, a picture of a photosystem. The purple and blue are proteins, and these little green circles are pigments kind of embedded within that protein. Their job is to capture light energy by exciting electrons to a higher energy level. Woohoo! Um, these photosystems are located in the thylakoids membranes. The thylakoids, remember, are these little discs within the chloroplast, and these discs are made of membrane, and so that is where these photosystems live. And so again, by having lots and lots of discs, we increase the surface area so we can get lots and lots of these photosystems in there. Now, the structure is fairly complex to these photosystems, so let's break down what is all in there. Um, the first component is this guy right here, the primary electron acceptor. Here it is in this blue square. This is a protein that binds to excited electrons, preventing them from returning to the ground state. In other words, when the electron is excited, woohoo, the primary electron acceptor is like, ha, snatches it in that high energy state and keeps it there for a second. Um, the reaction center complex is this little area right here and it has a specific chlorophyll molecule that is linked to the primary electron acceptor. So in other words, this chlorophyll is going to pass electrons to the primary electron acceptor here. Um, and that takes place in this reaction center uh, complex. Finally, there is a light harvesting complex. That's all this area around it. Um, these are additional pigments that surround the reaction center complex. And by having many pigments, that means we can have different types of pigments to absorb a wider range of wavelengths, okay? Um, continuing with these photosystems, that's their structure. Note that there's two types and they're named for the wavelength that their reaction center chlorophyll absorbs. So photosystem two is P680 for photosystem that absorbs 680 nanometers wavelength of light. Photosystem one absorbs 700 nanometer wavelength of light. Note that they are uh, named in order of discovery. 
but in terms of process, Photosystem 2 is actually coming before 1. And we do that because why not make things even more complicated, right? Okay, here's just another look at this. So here's that thylakoid disc, and here's the membrane of that thylakoid disc, and you see Photosystem 2 and Photosystem 1. Here's another way to look at this. Um, this is more of a schematic diagram, Photosystem 2 and Photosystem 1. And you can see like, hmm, ATP synthase, and oh, this some of these things look should look a little familiar to you. The next player is water. Water donates an electron, replacing the electron that's lost at the reaction center. So you may remember that that primary electron acceptor snags an electron. Well, water is going to ultimately replace the electron that that came from, from chlorophyll. So water is going to donate an electron. And note that water becomes oxygen after donating that electron. Hmm, that should be familiar to you cellular respiration oxygen accepted an electron to become water here water is donating an electron to become oxygen mm. um, other players adp and phosphate and ad nadp plus so again nadp plus is just like nad plus those electron carriers that played a role in cellular respiration uh, they play a similar role here in photosynthesis, but it's a slightly different molecule, so it's called NADP+. Just think P for photosynthesis, though that's not what it actually stands for. Um, and then the last player is the chloroplast itself, which again we learned about in an earlier unit, um, and, and um, you know has these thylakoid discs where the action happens. So now let's look at the process. So as I said, the process occurs in these thylakoid discs. And what happens is a specific wavelength of light is going to hit the photosystem. And that's going to excite an electron in the light harvesting complex. So basically, light hits a pigment, and that's going to excite the electron. Woohoo! Okay, um, here's just another diagram that shows it in a little bit different way. Light is hitting one of these pigments, woohoo! And an electron jumps up. Okay, so now we have one electron in this high energy level. Um, what happens next is when that electron falls back down to its ground state, that, that uh, exergonic process is coupled with the endergonic process of exciting a neighboring electron. And so this electron goes back down, but that excites this electron. This electron then goes back down, which excites this electron. And this process continues until you get to that reaction center chlorophyll molecule. So an analogy for this in class, what I like to do is I'll have a row of students and they each have a little ball of paper. And when the first kid throws their ball of paper up, when that ball of paper starts to drop, the next kid will throw their ball of paper up. And then when that drops, the next person throws theirs. So the exergonic fall of the paper is coupled with the endergonic throwing of the next paper. So that's basically what's happening is we're sort of transferring the energy um, to that reaction center chlorophyll. Um, once we hit that reaction center chlorophyll, once again, the little ball of paper is thrown in the air, the electron jumps up to that higher energy level, but this time, yeah, the primary electron acceptor captures that electron and holds it in that high energy state. So in other words, when that last kid throws their uh, piece of paper up in the air, boom, I catch it and it's up in the air. It has a lot of potential energy now and we hold it there, okay? So now we have successfully captured the light energy. Now what we need to do is use that captured light energy to, to generate chemical energy. So that's where photosystem two comes in. Photosystem two is gonna generate ATP. And what happens is an electron is passed down an electron transport chain, and ATP is produced by chemiosmosis just like in cellular respiration. So you can see as this electron is passed, protons are pumped against their gradient into this thylakoid space. And then those protons go back out through ATP synthase and that ender exergonic movement of uh, protons down their gradient is coupled with the endergonic production of ATP, just like cellular respiration, no different. Um, Actually, it's a little different because <laughs> the final electron acceptor, instead of being oxygen in cellular respiration, in photosynthesis for photosystem two, the final electron acceptor is actually photosystem one. OK, 
Okay. Now photosystem one has kind of an empty slot because it also has excited an electron. So you can kind of picture light hitting both photosystems at the same time. Boom, boom. Both of them shoot an electron in that reaction center to a higher energy level. Both of those get snagged by that primary electron um, acceptor. And then um, this electron is replaced by the photosystem 2 1. Okay, so the final electron acceptor is photosystem 1. At this point, we have to replace the photosystem 2 electron, and that's where water comes in. So as I mentioned earlier, water donates an electron to photosystem 2, replaces the one that's been excited and passed on. Um, and then when water loses that electron, it breaks apart and forms oxygen. And again, there's a specific chemical reaction that takes place there involving some protons, but you don't need to get too worked up about that. So at this point, photosystem two is kind of back to normal. It's got its electron. Its electron was excited and passed on, but now it's been replaced. This also explains why we need water and produce oxygen during this process. Now we're in photosystem one. So photosystem two generated this ATP. Photosystem one generates NADPH. And so basically, again, light hits photosystem one. The electron is excited. Woohoo! And this time, it's passed pretty much directly to NADP plus to form NADPH. And so by the time we're done, we have converted light energy into the chemical energy of ATP and NADPH. This electron is excited, woo! This electron is excited, woo! This electron is replacing the one lost in photosystem one. This electron is replaced by water. Um, and ultimately we now have ATP and NADPH. So, um, so there's kind of a recap. And again, you can look at it with this diagram or you can look at it with this diagram, um, but that is the light dependent stage. So we have successfully captured light energy. Woohoo! Ha! And then we have used that light energy to make chemical energy of ATP and NADPH. So, um, and then here's just another view of that same process. So in our next screencast, we're gonna take that chemical energy, ATP and NADPH, and we're gonna use it to make sugars.